This is me biking towards my big show at Burning Man. I'm going to be performing way up there inside that dome. In fact, I actually made the sculpture I'm going to perform in. This is my story about being an artist at Burning Man. And Burning Man is not for the faint of heart. And making a sculpture and performing on it high up in the air out there, what with the dust storms and the wind and heat and the amazingness and the uh, craziness. I jumped into the deep end and it was a whole new world. Really, what more could a girl ask for? I made this crescent moon aerial sculpture in one month and while working a full-time job. What I'm trying to tell you is getting ready for the playa was a nightmare. First, I had like three days to try and choreograph and act on this unwieldy new sculpture that I rigged up in my apartment. While I was working a full-time job, while I was getting ready for Burning Man. So I was like, I'm gonna go with a five on the scale of hedgehog cake. Please go. <laughs> I pulled an all-nighter packing and taping up the moon with aerial tape. I had to rent a trailer last minute. There was a classic downtown LA moment. Everyone raise their stones and hurt but magically made it onto the road. Burning Man, here I come. And I was tested on the way to Burning Man. First, the trailer was not installed properly by the <clears throat> company. At 2 a.m. on the highway, it jumped off the hitch and was fishtailing behind the truck, sparks flying, dragging along the highway. It was bad. Of course, I didn't get any footage of that, so you get to watch this much more chill footage of the second time I had to emergency pull over on the highway. This, again, was much less stressful. Another part of the truck just kind of had broken off. It wasn't really a big deal, and it wasn't 2 a.m. And luckily, since I'm me, I had tools handy, and we were back on the road in no time. I'm too well to say though, I couldn't help feeling like a little bit like the universe was asking me, do you really want to be doing this? Are you sure? Which isn't really the overwhelming affirmation a girl is looking for when she's engineered and welded her own sculpture and she's going to go perform on it high in the air in the middle of the desert. We made it. A lot of people think a lot of things about Burning Man. And that makes sense, because Burning Man is a lot of things. One thing it isn't, however, and this may actually be a big surprise, Burning Man is not a festival. So what is it? Burning Man is a place where there is awe. The vastness is actually just mind-blowing. 70,000 people create a city for nine days in a desert they call the Playa. And the incredibly special building blocks of that city are the least tangible ones. The creativity and freedom, the small moments, the art, the absolute relentlessness, the shared intimacy with friends and strangers. One might simply call them pre-friends. It is everywhere and all the time. There are endless discoveries and all of them want you to participate. The immensity of the beauty is often in concert with the immensity of the challenges. And those come in all forms, but a lot definitely stem from the intensity of the environment. Mother nature is heavy metal. No lie, at least a few times a year, my friends and I look at each other and are like, wait, we chose to do this? But of course we did. Because most of all, it's this constant, fantastic celebration of absurdity, and within that, wonder. A big thanks to Derek McCoy for letting me use his amazing footage of Burning Man that is featured here. Check out his website linked below. Early in the week, I helped with the installation of a sculpture by artist, friend, and wonderful human, Peyton Scott Russell. Right now, I want people to observe. <clears throat> Again, be with your thoughts. Everything first starts with a thought. You may know him from his iconic mural of George Floyd. This piece is called Black Book Remix 2.0. A black book is like a sketchbook, but graffiti writers use them to collect each other's tags and to develop different techniques for how to approach their lettering. I just decided to build a larger than my black book, and the pages in the book are four by eight sheets of plywood. The column, the center column is, is lettering. The lettering comes down and then the pages go out. And the pages for the graffiti writer 
is how we interpret those letters. And a lot of times we abstract those. Each set of those four by eight pages features a different street artist from Minneapolis. And as Peyton said, It's up to all of us to express the way we handle our writing, our letter, and how we communicate to each other. There were some real heroes who helped this sculpture come to life, and I was not one of them. Full props to 555 Fabrication. I simply wanted to help, and it turns out that I'm really good at climbing around on a 25-foot tall stack of letters. Who knew? It's like I'm a trained professional or something. I'm like, finally something I can do that's helpful. Find things. I focused on stringing up lighting, doing finishing touches, and some last letter arranging. And just look at this literal manifestation of supportive teamwork. Welcome to Burning Man. And let me tell you, this was a hot day probably about 105 degrees, which is both almost unbearable, but also part of it. And you know what? It was awesome. The playa gives you the opportunity and also insists that you test the boundaries of yourself. And you know what happens when people have the space to test their boundaries? They grow. As for my moon sculpture, I actually brought my own aerial rig to set up at our camp so that I could use it for training and also for other people to share. Of course, a bunch of my camp friends immediately jumped in to help out. What a crew. Assembling my aerial moon on the playa was a big test for me. It was my first time assembling it in the field, so to speak, and I was really psyched when it came together smoothly. If you watch my video about building this moon, you'll know the assembly joints you see here gave me some troubles. I had to make a last minute design change to add this tubing in order to reinforce the joints and ensure that my moon wouldn't suddenly break apart while I was 40 feet in the air. And once again, what a crew. Burning Man, it's about community. I performed in this amazing sculpture called the Sonic Sphere. This sphere is 50 foot in diameter and there were nets at different levels that people could lie down in. There were speakers all around the sphere pointing in towards the center so it was a fully immersive experience. While being huge, it felt so intimate and we planned our show for golden hour. Huge shout out to my friend Lyra, who's part of the very exclusive Engineer Aerialist Club with me, except she actually is an engineer. She helped make this show possible and is also an actual rock star. All right, let's do this. Showtime. I toured professionally when I was younger and I've done thousands of live shows. It is so different when it's your art, your vision. But also the same in the sense that suddenly it's showtime. And a singular moment you've been working towards and training towards for hundreds if not thousands of hours is suddenly happening. As a young girl, I always wanted to fly. As a preteen, I joined the circus as an aerialist. And as a teenager, I decided I wanted to do it on my own terms. So I went to art school and I learned to sculpt, weld, and make things. This is me performing at Burning Man on my own aerial sculpture. This was a big moment. And it's just the beginning. Thank you for being a part of it. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, keep exploring.